Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is an exciting day for me. I am going to begin a 10 part series on how to set up your first marine aquarium. Um, I'm doing this uh, because this is all the stuff that, that I wish I knew. First of all, go ahead, please subscribe to my channel, like it. Just remember, uh, anytime during these videos, ask any questions, um, I'll get back to you. Um, and I'm going to forget things. This is not going to be comprehensive. But let me just talk about this. This first video is called Initial Considerations. Um, and I want to talk about a lot of stuff today. So um, these 10 videos, which I'm going to overview in a minute, are, are definitely not comprehensive. There are so many things in this hobby, and it changes so rapidly, and different opinions that, that I'm not going to get it all. And I'm sure there are things that I'm forgetting. And there are so many ways of doing things that are correct and good and that will work. I'm going to tell you about how I've had success and all the research and planning I have done so that hopefully you'll be able to take what I've done, replicate it, and tweak it a little bit to find your, your own way. <clears throat> and this is what I would have liked. When I was researching, I was trying to look for written books. I have I have old books, which, I mean, if you look at an aquarium book that's, that's 10 years old, it's it's pretty outdated already. I mean, they have underground filters, which is when I started in the hobby. I remember a lot of this stuff. And there are a lot of good new books out there. They talk about all sorts of things, like Berlin filters and some, some perfusion, trickle filters, and, and a lot of things we use or we call something different. So you're going to find something in a book that says one thing. Then you're going to go on to forums, and everybody on a forum has a strong opinion. And most people in the reefing community are super polite, but some people just really firmly believe in what they believe in and, 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 and can be kind of rude, and, and, and you don't know who to trust or who to believe. Um, you know, so that being said, if you have outdated books, you don't know who to trust online because everybody's opinion is different, um, where do you look? So you just start piecing things together. Books I watched so many YouTube videos looking at different ways. I have copious notes that I took when I started my saltwater aquarium. I probably watched all the bulk reef supply videos and I'm going to go through all of this as the videos go on and point you in the right direction of where you can look, what videos you can watch, what books I would recommend, what forums I would recommend, so on and so forth. And if you have any questions, please, again, just, just ask and I will get back to you and answer them. Um, why should you trust me? I don't think you should trust anybody who's posting a video to YouTube. Um, I've had success and I think you should take my opinions with a grain of salt. Um, they work for me, um, so I believe they're going to work for you, but you're going to have to find your own way and your own path. And this is just the way that has worked for me. Um, I consider myself, you know, um, a medium level in the saltwater um, aquarium hobby. Um, I'm not a beginner, I'm not an expert by any means, um, but I am definitely a researcher and I've done a lot of research and I will continue to do research because I love it and that's why we do this hobby. If you don't love it, why would you spend thousands and thousands of dollars and hundreds and hundreds of hours <laughs> dedicated to keeping keeping these creatures? So. Overview of the 10 videos. Just really quickly, I'm going to tell you about where I'm going to be going so that maybe I can tantalize you to, to tell your friends about it and to hit subscribe and watch as they come out. Hopefully about one a week, I'm hoping. So this one is just all my initial considerations. Video two is called Doing Your Research. I'm going to talk about places I've researched, what things you should know before you even purchase your first piece of equipment, um, <clears throat> websites, forums, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Video three is choosing your tank and stand. This is a really big deal, and I think oftentimes people don't give enough thought. So we're going to talk about all different kinds of stands, all different kinds of, of tanks from nano all the way up to probably around 200 gallon tanks. You know, what level of the apartment are you in? Where do you want to place it? I mean, there's so much that goes into it. Video four, lighting, heating, and circulation. These are just essential things that seem really simple and yet are so incredibly crucial for this hobby, especially if you want to ever have corals or anemones. Video five, media reactors and filtration. I'm going to talk about uh, carbon reactors, about GFO reactors. I'm going to talk about all the kinds of filtration, chemical filtration, biological, mechanical filtration, but I am going to save biological filtration for more in-depth later. 
Uh, number six is sumps and refugium. We're going to look at custom-made sumps, sump that came with mine, uh, the compartments of a sump. What is refugium? Can you combine refugium and a sump? How about hang on the back? Um, how about you know a remote sump? And talk about the pros and cons to each of those and, and why I think it's really important to have a sump of, of some kind. Video number seven is live rock, live sand, and biofiltration. And those just really go well together. Um, you know, the main purpose of having the live rock that you see is biological filtration. Same thing with the live sand is the biological filtration. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that and the importance of that um, and, and tips about sand bed depths, deep sand beds, shallow sand beds, no sand beds, live rock, what kind of live rock, so on and so forth. So that leaving the video, you'll have a good sense of, of how to go forward. Uh, video 8 is going to be the nitrogen cycle, RODI water, and salt water. Um, this is stuff as we're getting really close to putting water in our tank for the first time, right? So you're going to need to know things about what is a cycle, and there are tons of videos out there, and I'm just going to go over a brief overview of what it means to cycle your aquarium, because when I was starting out, I heard that all the time, do this to cycle, and that to cycle, and put in a piece of shrimp, or put in some clownfish, or whatever and and it was just so overwhelming so i kind of want to simplify it and talk about different ways you can cycle and what to expect during a cycle and then rodi water are you going to buy your own rodi water are you going to buy your own filters what exactly is a reverse osmosis deionization filter what when you're looking at an rodi filter what are the various stages what are you looking at how often do you have to replace things um i just want to explain it to you so you have a really good understanding of what rodi water is and what it isn't um, now video number nine is going to be adding livestock and video nine we're going to talk about when you're getting close to adding your first livestock which is going to be several weeks after um, after your tank is up and running you know what should you add what are cleanup crews um, what sort of cleanup crew should you have and, it, and it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all discussion because your cleanup crew is going to depend on how you want to filter for example if you want to have a deep sand bed, you're going to have a different cleanup crew than if you have no sand bed. And it's just important to understand what your goal is so that you know exactly what you should or should not buy for that cleanup crew. Uh, also going to talk about um, how to introduce fish, drip acclimation, different kinds of fish to add, um, different kinds of invertebrates, anemones, corals, SPS, LPS. Um, so on and so forth and a lot of that is gonna you know it's a big conversation and it's not it's not a simple conversation so we're gonna we're gonna go in depth there uh, video number 10 is gonna be long-term caring for your tank um, you know what steps are you gonna have to do every day every week every month you know semi-annually annually um, what sort of things should you have <clears throat> as a backup you know old tank syndrome what is that is it gonna happen to you um, and where do you see yourself in five years with your tank? Uh, what kind of growth do you want to have? Uh, and then there are, uh, also be a time to kind of wrap things up um, in that last video. And I may have an extra video at the end of that. We'll see. Okay, that being said, as a general overview, a couple things I want to talk about in this initial consideration is this hobby is relatively new compared to all hobbies. I mean, a modern marine aquarium hobby is what 20 years old you know people were having success before then but 20 years old that's that's probably just about right um, and it's 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 about half science and it's half um, it's half anecdotal meaning people's stories like some things work for some people and don't work for others and some things work and we don't know why they work so uh, we're gonna try to talk about what we do know is fact in this hobby and then what's debated and, and what decisions you have to make. Before you even start buying any piece of equipment, I think you need to start at the very end. And I was a teacher for many years. And they call it backwards planning. What is your goal, right? Uh, is your goal to have a 500 gallon, you know, system with, you know, who knows, like sharks and all sorts of stuff. Is your goal to have you know, something that can go in your desk. Is your goal to have something that's gonna require a lot of maintenance or a little bit of maintenance? Do you want to breed something? Um, you know, do you, like, is it gonna be the centerpiece of a room? Are you gonna grow with a tank? I, I, is it, you know, knowing what your goal is is gonna determine everything about your tank, right? So, you know, if, 
if you want to go a certain way, it's going to change the equipment you buy and the stand you buy and the sumps you buy. You know, the size of your tank alone is going to determine so much of your equipment. So if you know what your end goal is, for example, looking at my tank, I, after going back and forth, knew I wanted a primarily anemone tank with some LPS in there. Um, I'm not going for small pop stony corals. I'm not trying to show off my fish. I really wanted to have uh, just a couple fish, a couple clowns, an anemone, and then once my anemone is somewhat settled, maybe after six months or so, starting to add a few other things. And I want this to be a centerpiece. Um, I want this to be something that can run for generations, that I can give to my children, they can give to their children, because if you care for your anemone, Anemones can live generations and generations, and I want to be that kind of a caretaker. So know your goal first, then start. Choose your location. B like, you know, before you even go to the next video, walk around your apartment, walk around your house. You know, figure out exactly where you want to put it. You know, and we're going to talk about places you should and shouldn't put it. You, you don't want to put it by an exterior wall. You don't want to put it next to a window. You don't want to put it near some place that's going to receive direct light. You don't want to put it somewhere where the kids might break it. You know, you want it to be somewhere, you know, if, if you don't like noise, you don't want it in your bedroom. You might not want to hide it somewhere. Is it going to be a centerpiece of, of your room? If so, you're going to have to clean it a lot more. You know, so choose where you want to do it. And also, what size is your tank? If you're putting in a 20 gallon nano tank, you can pretty much put it anywhere you want. But if you're putting in a 200 gallon tank, you better know what sort of joists you have underneath your tank. You better, you better know that the, the you better call over some sort of general contractor to look to make sure that the floor where you're putting it can support 200 pounds of water. And if it can't, you either gotta choose a new place or you need to have somebody help buffer that structure. Um, you know, if you're living in a condo of 200 gallons, what happens if your water's filled? Do you have a backup plan uh, for if, if, if anything happens? You know, do you have the right insurance? I mean, there's just so many questions um, that we're gonna talk about. Um, and then where do you want to start? Do you want to start with a small tank or a big tank? And now here's the weird thing about this hobby. The cheapest way to start is a nano tank. And that's really anything under 50 gallons. You know, this is a really an intermediate. It's 43 gallons. It's the, the high end of a, of, of a nano aquarium. It's going to be the cheapest way to start. A few thousand dollars. But it's also the most difficult to keep. Uh, because you have such a small amount of water that changes happen like that. So... You can go with a bigger tank, say a 90 gallon, a really standard size. You're going to double your price, you know, and, but it's going to be easier to maintain that tank, but it's also more to clean and more work to do. So that's a big question. What size of a tank? And it also depends on what sort of livestock do you want to put in? Are you going to have a community tank, a size of tank this big? I don't want to put in too many fish. You know, if you want to have um, some sort of tangs or some sort of semi-aggressive fish, you're going to have to have a much bigger space. So again, what's your end goal? What do you want it to look like? And that's gonna dictate a lot of things. Cost. I have spent on this system roughly $5,000. And I wanna hold this up to you, and, I'll, and you can pause it on this so you can kinda of see it. This is a breakdown of the equipment and the cost. I bought a lot of things on eBay, a lot of used items. Um, and you can see the total up here a while ago was 3,300. I have added all the things on this page since then. Plus, I have added the stuff over here as well. So this small tank, now I've done it very nicely, you know, and, 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 and I haven't skimped. So I spent about five grand. Can you do it for a couple thousand less? Absolutely. Don't think you have to spend five grand, but I put in some really nice things in this tank, which I'll talk about at a later basis. So know your cost. And you know something? This tank, I've been building it for a year now. I've been buying pieces and it, and, and it sat empty for six months before I, I was even able to fill it with water. You know, so I just bought it piece by piece, um, knowing that I didn't have all the money right away. Um, really important. Patience, patience, patience. Every video you'll ever watch will talk about, this is, <laughs> you have to be patient in this hobby. If you're not patient, you're going to fail. Um, you're gonna crash your tank. You're gonna add a disease in there that's gonna wipe everything out. You're not gonna do your research. You're gonna kill everything and you're gonna get frustrated, fed up, and then this money will be down the drain and you'll be trying to sell it on Craigslist. This hobby takes years to master, and it takes a long time, a long time. So you, you need to be patient. I waited, you know, before I got my anemone there, um, three, four months, and that was relatively quick. 
um, to, to get that anemone, you know, and motion. I was a scuba diver. I used to live in Hawaii. I love snorkeling. I love our reefs. I want to see them there. Um, and because of that, I made decisions on this tank to try to be as eco-friendly as possible and to not pull things that come directly from the ocean. For example, my two fish are ORA fish. They're farmed clowns. My anemone is a farmed anemone. You know, these things aren't pulled directly. So just think about that. Think about, you know, do you want this hobby to be around for a very, very long time? And if you do, um, try to make sustainable options and sustainable choices when you can. Um, first and foremost, think of the well-being of the livestock. <clears throat> Don't think of your fish or your anemone or your coral or your snails or your crabs as expendable. You know, um, think about them like your like your pet cat or your pet dog or whatever it is. You know, you don't you don't take them in and put them in an environment that is unhealthy where they die and then just go out and buy another one. You'd be horrified if, if you mistreated an animal. So think about it the same way here. You know, don't put in an animal unless you know it's ready, unless you know that its environment is healthy and you have a backup plan in case something happens. So really try to treat your livestock really well and think of their well-being first. Last thing I want to talk about, I know this is a long video, and these are going to be long videos, um, so if you're interested, that's awesome. If not, obviously this isn't for you, but hopefully it will be. Video number two is going to be doing your research, and I'm going to go into way more depth talking about the kinds of equipments to buy, what websites have been helpful, where to buy things online, where to buy livestock, what forums I would recommend, so on and so forth. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think it's going to be helpful to you or somebody you know who wants to get into the hobby, just send them a link to this, um, have them sign up. I'm going to hopefully make one a week. Uh, and yeah, that means it will probably be about 10, 11 weeks out before everything's finished. But hopefully by the end, we will have journeyed a long way together. I will answer your questions along the way. And uh, it'll be a good resource out there for people who are trying to get into the hobby. Thank you guys very much. And I will see you next time.